Good evening and welcome to Confessions. I'm your hostess of light, Jenny Watson. And tonight we are talking about one of my favorite subjects, astrology. Now not everybody believes in astrology, but it's deadly accurate if you follow it. And you know, I believe that when we're born, the planet of peri alignments that are in place when we're born creates this kind of a blueprint of our lives. And when you follow it and you study it, you can actually see, you know, if parts about yourself where there's lessons you might want to learn or clues to your personality or things that you want to know, and there's actually a real science behind it. And it's as varied as any religion because there are so many different takes on it and different astrologers have different perspectives and different um, experiences with it. So um, tonight I thought it would be really cool and fun to talk about astrology. And with me tonight is a very awesome, dead-on, accurate astrologer, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him in person and get a reading with him, and he pretty much blew my mind. It was fabulous. And he is as witty and sarcastic as he appears, folks, but he is also genuinely kind, and I think he might hunt me down and kill me for saying that, but, you know, I'll take my chances. And more than an accurate, accurate astrologer, he is also a blogger, a co-host co of a radio blog, the blog talk radio co-host. I don't know what's in the air today. I can't speak. And an author. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on the, the very entertaining Mr. Matthew Curry. Matthew, how are you? Greetings, people of Earth. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Are you ready to bear your soul? Uh, yes, or parts of it. Choice. Parts of it? You oh, no, baby. Back. You are in awesome. my confessional now. Okay. I, I, I surrender then. I'll tell you everything. <laughs> See, that didn't take much. I know. I, I, so how are you doing? You good? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm recovering from the waterboarding now. So uh, overall, yeah, I'm doing pretty good this evening. I'm You're doing recovering from the what? The waterboarding. Most people don't realize that when someone is on this show, they get waterboarded extensively. It's, it's where the confessions come from. Because I've, I've seen clips of the show, and people seem fairly comfortable with bearing their souls to you. And what most people who've watched this before don't realize is there's a lot of waterboarding uh, involved, uh, a lot of sleep deprivation. It's pretty cruel, actually. But uh, I love what you But do. effective. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. There's a horrifying Virgo precision to everything you do. There is. But it always comes out perfect in the end, doesn't it? Exactly. And, and clean. Yes. So, speaking of kind of healthcare and things like that, it was like pulling teeth to get any information out of you about who you are and everything. So, let's just start with the basics. Let's get it over with. We can get into some fun. How did you get into astrology? I, uh, long story short, uh, kind of, I was raised in an environment where my dad was a skeptic and my mom used to sneak around behind his back reading tea leaves. And there was a book called The Complete Astrology that came out when I was about like five or six years old, something like that. My mom had a look at it and said there was too much math. And I sat and I looked through it, and within about 18 months, I was hand calculating birth charts and trying to figure out, you know, because this stuff really works. And, you know, I. But at I was, the age of seven and a half. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> tremendous <laughs> wasted talent, tremendous. Uh, but. Uh, uh, that is basically how I got started, and uh, later on I, I took psych courses in college, and I took counseling courses, and I've had positions like that, and I got, long story short, I wanted to help people, but I got really, really tired of the let's sit around and talk about your childhood for three months sort of thing before we get to the point, point. and to me one of the best things about astrology is let's get to the point, I'm depressed, why, bum, bum, bum. here you go, you're done, it's not that easy, but it's... Compared to most forms of counseling, it's it's that easy, and it you works. Know, I laughed because I went and I got a master's in psycho psychology, and I did that whole thing, and then yeah. I turn around, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is much more. Boom, I'm healed. That healed, but it's like it was. It's like looking at chart. Oh, that's what your problem is. All right, done. We're forward. It's, yeah, it's it's okay. Well, I guess basically it's astrology. We can say your problem is uh, you were born like that, but here's why. <laughs> Um, it's but really, in, you know, in partial seriousness. Anyway, uh, it really is better than any other technique I've ever come across for really helping people and helping people figure out their lives and what's going on, what they can do with it. And um, unlike any other branch of psychology I've studied, looking at the birth chart and really understanding 
of you know how your Mars placement affects your drives or how your Moon placement affects your emotional states. Uh, looking at all that really is it's it's like you can't win at poker unless you know what cards you're holding. And I can't really think of any other branch of psychology or counseling that really tells you here are the cards you're holding. So right. here's how you play them. And also it predicts the future, which is also cool. That's very cool. So I know different astrologers have different angles or areas of expertise. What would you say yours is? I uh, I do I end up doing a lot of work with uh, relationships. So I mean we can cover anything uh, when we're doing a reading, but I tend to do a lot of stuff about relationships, uh, what's wrong with people's love lives, why they don't have a love life. Yes, uh, yes, he does, folks. And yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry by the way. Uh, but uh, that and of course I mean there's all the usual thing that comes up like career counseling, uh, health. Really, it can cover just about anything. I know there are a lot of astrologers who do the things like you know past life stuff and that sort of thing. I, I'm no good with that because I I sort of believe in that sort of thing, but like I don't know. I'm pretty sure we're here now, and really, I just kind of like helping people solve their problems and make their lives better. And I I don't know about the whole reincarnation thing. I I kind of think it happens. I'm well, I'm pretty sure it does, but I can't tell you looking at your birth chart who you were. I'm sure you were royalty. Oh me? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I can tell you no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> there are other astrologers who are great at that sort of thing. I just want to kind of solve problems and make people happier here and now. And when they die, hopefully they'll get reassigned somewhere better. True story. So you actually you read the overall chart of our birth, but you also did do two other layers. One is, is let me correct me if I'm wrong, but a solar return and a, a progress chart. Or uh, yeah, there are, there are, when you're looking at a person's future, uh, primarily you look at the transits, which are basically oh, the here when you were born, and they're here now, so one has an effect on the other. Uh, there's also secondary progressions, which is grotesquely complex, technically. Um, and there, there's other things like solar turns. A lot of people would like to get a reading on their birthday. And the positions of the planets on your birthday actually tell you a fair bit about what the next year is going to be like. So a solar return, for those who don't understand, you know, astrologers too much, that's like a birthday reading, like what is going on that day yeah. of your birthday that year and what you can expect that year. And then a progress chart, tell us a little bit about what that is. Uh, the progressed chart is, long story short, if a person is, let's say, 35 years old, there is a part of their birth chart that progresses to the point where they are kind of like a person who was born 35 days later. I know that's a little strange, but, uh, you know, it's kind of like, how do I put this? Have you ever noticed Scorpios kind of lighten up a little in their 30s? Sometimes, a little bit. Uh, they start out very intense children, but then they know lighten what? up. Yeah. And then that's because by their secondary progressions, they have, in a sense, become a Sagittarius. Not too much, though. I mean, they're still going to be a Scorpio, and we love them all, and I'm just thankful that none of them have my home address. Please don't hurt me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, so, uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> so I'm thinking, as I'm analyzing in my head, going, so is, does that make me less Virgo right now? I'm supposed to be Libra? I think, let me see, I'm, I, think, I don't know I mean, if that works for me. I believe in your case you would be a little, you would have a slightly more of a Libra tinge to you than perhaps you did when you were born. Yeah. And you know, you know what that is, it's like the Libra tinge, Virgos love cleaning stuff up like that, so. But I'm stuck. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I did ask. All right, so tell us, what is going on right now with the planet? Give us a little insight of what's, what's happening right now. It's a mess. No, it's, uh, well, okay, for one thing, really, <laughs> the big thing that's been messing with people for around the last year and a half is the Uranus-Pluto Uranus square, and that is a big one. Uh, not just in individual people's lives, but uh, in a larger sense as far as the world is good. Like, for example... The last time Uranus and Pluto were conjunct, they're very slow planets, they're now at a square to each other, a 90 degree separation. The last time this was happening was in the mid-60s. 
And in the mid-60s, there was a whole lot of stuff about, uh, there was the counterculture, there was uh, civil rights, uh, feminism, gay rights, all of these things kind of had their start and started really growing. And uh, There was a big emphasis on personal freedom and the whole hippie thing and all of that. And we are now at the square, which is kind of why now the man is fighting back. That's why the NSA is listening to this right now. That's why your <laughs> bank can't find your mortgage papers, but they're going to foreclose on you anyway. And that's where a lot of the larger world suckage is coming from right now. Very interesting times to be alive. That's kind of the big suckage. thing. Okay. Uh, anyway, suckage. Yeah. Suckage. Uh, on a smaller scale, I mean, it's the sun has just recently entered Virgo. H happy birthday, y'all. And uh, that is kind of, that's not just big news for Virgos because, you know, birthday presents. Uh, but uh, this will, for example, create a little tension for the Geminis and the Sagittariuses, cause a little confusion for the Pisces, but what doesn't confuse a Pisces? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Very no, much. he's not. I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, and that is going to be, and that actually, we just, the last full moon we had uh, was at 28 degrees Aquarius. That is doing some loopy things for people, too, depending on the individual placements in your birth chart. Oh my gosh, you know what I found last week is I totally got exhausted and uh, suffering from almost like bed rest. It was so crazy. But then everywhere I looked around, people's health were breaking down everywhere. Ah, now so you see, this, if I'm remembering your chart correctly, I believe that full moon actually fell in your sixth house. So uh, that would kind of make for a lot of that sort of thing going on around you. Have you been, have you been a bit tired recently? Or? I've been exhausted. Like, literally, I had to take, work off, take off of work to rest. But, well, no, it wasn't in my sixth. It was actually in my, it, it was in my seventh, because I looked. Okay, okay. So it was in your, oh, right, okay. Here we go. Um... Well, I, I, we, do we really want to talk about your personal life? Do we? Really I mean, I'm Leo rising. Of course, we do, and I'm something to okay. stuff, But this is about you, so we'll. we'll, we'll keep no, it let's, talk about so. what's <laughs> let's talk about what's. Let's talk about. No, we can't talk about what's going to happen with the next full moon that falls in your eighth house because we don't have an adult rating here, do we? No. Oh no, we we are totally fine. This is called confession. Oh, okay. Um, but we can talk offline. Next, next full moon. Next All I'm saying is, uh, bow chicka wow wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. I like him. He is very <laughs> accurate, and I know this for a fact because, to quote, I am a coiled spring of awesomeness waiting to erupt. I mean, if that's not that on accuracy, book a reading, folks. Book a reading. <laughs> <laughs> that, and of course, uh, you know, I just love saying, bow chicka wow wow. I know, what you do. It must be an astrology thing. It is. It's uh, it's actually an ancient Sanskrit term, <laughs> meaning it's time to get your yayas out. Yeah. That's well, speaking of yayas, uh, yes, you, you co-host a radio blog talk show, blog talk radio show. I can't get that right. Yes. Uh, love and sex in the stars. Love and love sex in the stars. Uh, with my co-host Hillary Young from astrologydating.com. Astrologydating.com. Mm -hmm. Got to do the pitch. It's free. Yep. Go sign up. You get the personality profile, the whole thing. It's still free, and your soulmate's kicking around in the back somewhere. Absolutely. So, what is this weekly talk show about? Uh, it's about we. You know, we're all over the place. We talk about we talk about love and sex and astrology. Uh, this week, for example, a Tuesday show, we have a couple coming up who, uh, darned if I can remember their names, but they are <laughs> documenting their entire relationship online. And they have a they have a coaching service. And, uh, you know, when it comes to relationship coaching, I always picture they're going to be standing there in the striped shirt and blowing the whistle, <laughs> the flag on the play. I'm sorry, you need a shower. In-yard penalty. Uh, but uh, we, we talk to a lot of people who are various aspects of love, various aspects of uh, sex, and there is an astrological angle, and uh, at some point in the future, I, I will also be doing a blog talk radio show with the lovely and talented Aliza from MoonPlutoAstrology.com. Uh, as soon as she can be persuaded to come out of her shell, she is a cancer, she needs a little encouragement, but uh, at some point, that that is going to be a brilliant show, too. Oh, send her my way. You will. She'll, you can just crack her open. Get those, those I will crack her open. Busting open. Little I can do it. 
Cancers are always a little intimidated and frightened by people because cancers, all crabs know that someone out there figures they're going to go great with a little melted butter. <laughs> That's what I use. <laughs> <laughs> so back to, back to your show, which is really good because I listened to it last week on orgasmic meditation. By the way, it hooked me up. Oh, orgasmic meditation. Yes. Yes, was it was a great jack. episode. What's that? I, I provide I played the role of the jackass in that one. You did. I did. It was great. It worked for you. <laughs> <laughs> so how can people turn in to listen to this every week? Uh, it's on Blog Talk Radio. Actually, if you just type in, I think if you go to the Google machine and type in Love and Sex and the Stars, you'll find it. Okay. Uh, I also post regularly on my blog, which used to be, okay. you know what, if you just go to Google and type in Matthew the Astrologer, you'll find me. I've got a, a, a brand new website, like so new, I don't even know if Google picks up on it, but it's I believe that's it right about there, the name of oh, it. Oh, yeah, right there. Right there. Uh, Matthew the Ast Go to MatthewTheAstrologer.com or type in Matthew the Astrologer or Matthew Astrology or whatever in your favorite search engine, and you'll find me and a blog and notes about the show and uh, stuff like that. Well, what do you blog about? Uh, pretty much entirely astrology. Uh, talking about from the uh, online courses I've been taking with the lovely and, and talented Aliza. She's over there. She's over there. Right over there. I saw her. She's real. She actually is. I, uh, you know, it's she kind doesn't of. Doesn't make it up. She actually is real. It's not like one of those things where you've got the internet girlfriend from some other country that no one's ever seen. <laughs> She's actually a real person. Um, we're teaching online courses, like right now we're in the middle of one about Jupiter and Saturn, we taught one about uh, Venus and Mars. We uh, will, in, in the near future, be making these courses available for individual study, so another reason to drop by my blog. So tell us uh, a little bit more about these classes. What do you get into with them? What do people learn from them? Uh, this is where this is for people who are kind of beginners or kind of intermediate students of astrology and what it is when we break it down when we're looking at Venus and Mars in one course or Jupiter or Saturn uh, we look at the functions that those planets perform in a birth chart in general and also in your specific birth chart so when we're doing it it's kind of like both an educational experience and a reading uh, it's it's the best of both worlds and uh, also very reasonably priced Oh, of course. We have to uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, and it's, uh, and really it's, uh, like, for example, if you find out about your Jupiter functions and your Jupiter cycle, it will naturally, it will naturally help you figure out what makes you happy, and as far as the Jupiter, the transit cycles go, it will give you your best chance at figuring out when, for lack of a better term, when you're going to be at your luckiest with the things that make you happiest. Um, the same with the Saturn cycle, except that Anyone who's into astrology much knows that Saturn is all scary and stuff. Um, most people, once they get a little into it, they've hear, heard about the Saturn return, which is terrifying. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that terrifying. But knowing where... I'll put it to you this way. Most of the people who come to me for a reading are usually experiencing some kind of a Saturn transit at the time. Uh, for the same reason that people don't usually go to the doctor and say, I'm perfectly healthy, what's wrong? <laughs> So, um, so right now with the course we're doing, we're helping people understand that function in their birth charts. And uh, the next course, I, don't know, I think we're doing, I, I know I'm doing a solo course on the Ascendant and Descendant, which rules Ooh. how you look, how you come across to people, and what you're looking for in a mate, and how that can all go horribly wrong, because this is the real world. Yeah. It's astrology for life in the real world, and things go horribly wrong on a regular basis, but we're here to help. Oh my gosh, that sounds fascinating because I understand the ascendant thing is our like our outside personality, but I never paid much attention to attention to the ascendant. The ascendant is the rising sign. It's what a lot of people refer to it as, and the opposite point is the descendant. And the descendant actually has a lot to do with your committed relationships and who you are drawn to and who you work with and that sort of thing. Uh, so that'll be firing up somewhere in mid September. Drop by the blog for details. Yeah, I'm dropping by because then I got some questions. It's, the, um, blog is, the blog is so new, it's kind of half finished. So just everyone, for God's sake, bookmark it and drop back on a regular basis. I'll, You know what? You come back to my blog <laughs> in a couple of days, I'll get you a discount on a reading. Just, I need the attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to learn how to be a Leo Rising. I'm coaching him on that. Trying so hard. It's you just... were trying so hard. 
I know. You're doing great. I'm so proud of you. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> so, you know, behind all that stuff lies, you know, you have seem to have a tough exterior when you're when you're talking, it's I love how you promote yourself and that you're so real and out there and who would have known that you were a little fluffy cancer rising? Right? My who knew? Who like knew? he conquered his cancer rising to be like this his rock star. I did. I crawled out of my shell. I was actually born with moon and cancer right on the ascendant. However, I am a Sagittarius, and basically the shorthand for that is, yes, I am constantly horrified at myself. <laughs> oh, and, and it, it, it so horrified I wrote a book about it called Conquer the Universe with Astrology. You so are stealing my next me. question. Tell us about okay, the book. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me Do lead over. you. Okay, just you carry on. <laughs> So you are also the author of a book called Conquer, Conquer the Universe with Astrology. What inspired you? Oh my you God! Yes. <laughs> what, is <laughs> what is Conquer the Universe about? with Astrology? Uh, is uh, it's it's my my I'm going to say my first book because there's another one coming at some point. Eh, sure. Uh, yeah, Conquer the I Universe know. with Astrology. It's an introduction to the personal planets: Sun, Moon, um, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. And it's it's kind of it's okay. It's pretty much all astrological comedy. I mean, let's be honest here. You'll learn, but you'll laugh. And if you don't learn, you'll still laugh. <laughs> I so like that. Actually, it was written for two basic pe kinds of people: people who want to learn more astrology, and people who actually don't but need to be amused anyway. That is quite clever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it, it came about because I was, to tell you the truth, this is not going to be my confession, but the truth is there is a very major publisher of metaphysical type stuff whose name may or may not start with a couple of uh, consonants. You'll look at your bookshelf, you'll find out who it is, um, who just screwed me royally. They signed me to write a book and they pulled out in the last moment and I got it published on my own anyway. And it's better. It's better because I get that much more of the money for it. Hell yeah. So yeah. Uh, conquering that the is conquering the universe, yo. <laughs> yeah. One, conquering the universe, one manuscript at a time. It's, it is available at better, a better Amazon near you. Very cool. So what else, Mr. Curry, do you have to share with this world about yourself? Uh, what, else you got, what else you going, got going on because you don't seem to be busy enough? I, you know, that's true. That's true. I, uh, I, I do readings. Uh, they're normally a little more serious than this, you know, poquito. Uh, a little more serious than this. And uh, I, uh, again, information is available through the site. Tell you what, uh, anyone who wants to write me an email, you write me an email. You can send. I've got two email addresses now. You can send it to MatthewTheAstrologer at gmail .com or AstrologyShow at gmail .com. I don't care. I will send you more information on my readings, and I'll get you a discount. That's how I roll. That's how you roll. So, Matthew, we are now entering the part of the show that's my favorite, where people get to confess. And this is also the part of the show where Matthew decided to avoid the question. So, I'd like you to take us back to a point in time where you felt challenged, or um, where you didn't know if you were going to make it, or you questioned yourself, or whatever it may be, and how you broke through it. And no, lying and cheating through the 11th grade is not counting. Hey, why not? I, that's I a think great most point. of society has done that I, except for me. I felt challenged by grade 11, so I lied and cheated my way through it. And yeah, it, nope. Uh-uh. It, it almost worked. Okay, you know what? You want to hear a story about overcoming, story. overcoming an obstacle? I have, for those of you who dig the astrology groove, um, I have Saturn in the ninth house which means that, among other things, I have a lot of fears around long-distance travel. Um, most people, you know, like there's a lot of people who are afraid of getting on airplanes. I am terrified of going to the office, filling out my forms to get the passport, uh, getting on the plane. Like, I'm not afraid of flying. I'm terrified of going through security to get on the plane. Once I'm on the plane, I'm fine. And, uh, you know... This thing was like, it, this fear of mine was very close to making me screw up a very good thing and also my life. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but, you know, here I am. I was born and raised in Canada. Here I am now in New York, New York, and it's great. Love it. I, am I doing the accent? Do I have? Do no, I? No, you're not even close. But I'll not let it pass. Close. Bless you. Thanks. You're very kind. <laughs> um, so, and you know what? This is a lifelong thing. I have been horrified and terrified of long distance travel, not of flying. You, I could fly all the time as long as the plane was just doing circles and landing in the same airport. Oh. But uh, which is which is really the only kind of flight uh, I could get on my card. Very bad frequent flyer plan. Um, but the peanuts were delicious. Anyway, uh, long story short, I had to overcome this. I had to face this. And you know what? I am now in the greatest city on earth. I am, business is doing great. I am a happy, fulfilled guy. And all because I just worked up the nerve to actually fill out the form on my passport and get on a plane and suck it up and show some cojones about the whole thing. Wow. So, so there you go. That. So you not also, only, go ahead. Also, I lied and cheated my way through grade 11, but that's another story. <laughs> that also would understand your Saturn in the ninth with your lack of discipline in education. Exactly, exactly. Saturn. I'm a little also. smarter than I may give people credit um, for. There you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, really, and, and you know, in all semi-seriousness, uh, when you learn where the Saturn is in your chart and how to deal with it, um, you'll be a better person for it. So Saturn indicates fears? Uh, fears, limitations. Uh, any one planet rules a lot of different things, but it can Saturn can rule everything from what part of your body you're most likely to get aches and pains in to uh, your phobias, uh, limitations, there's always that one department of your life where things just suck no matter what, and more often than not, uh, when we're looking at a person's birth chart, that's where Saturn is. Really? So I should have signed up for your course? Yeah, but you yeah, know... Is that, are you going to be holding these courses again? Um, well, uh, there is the Ascendant Descendant course next month, but we are actually going to be uh, packaging these for uh, individual sales so you can actually oh. take it yourself at home. So within a month or so, did I mention the blog? Did I mention the website? Did I mention people should bookmark this and, and drop by more often? You might have perhaps promoted okay. yourself that way. Yeah. Uh, there will be, within the next couple of weeks, we'll have information on that. There will be uh, home study courses on your Venus and Mars, which is your love drive and your sex drive. Uh, oh, yes, I will... With my bow chicka wow wow coming up in a month, I will get on that. Oh my! And uh, you you do realize that Virgo is the most misnamed sign in the zodiac. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Curry? Okay, you know Virgo is the Virgin, right? Yes. It's it's like any which, which what qualifies me to run confessions as a well exactly. You know what the difference is between a Virgo and a Virgin? Oh God! <laughs> what Matthew? Uh, about three drinks. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I think I shared with you that that was a fallacy, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely not yeah. true. Slander. <laughs> not true. You, you're pure. Pure people. Pure-hearted. Zero drink. Service-oriented. <laughs> That's a phrase you see a lot about, Virgo. Service-oriented. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to your confession. All right, yes. If, if other people have these kinds of fears, uh, whether it's the long distance travel or other kinds of um, deep seated fears that are holding them back, what kind of what would you recommend for people to do to kind of try to work through that? It's I, I mean, of course, that's individual based on whatever it is specifically a person is fearing and holding them back. But you know what? Strangely enough, sometimes just knowing it's there is enough to be able to face it down. Um, like for example, a lot of people. Uh, people who are having trouble with their relationships, sometimes it will relate to a Saturn in the second house where they are worried about their material resources or, uh, you know, people who are having difficulty with their jobs and it's not because they have Saturn in the tenth house, which rules your job, uh, but because it might be Saturn in the fifth and they simply find they're not having enough fun with it or something like that. And uh, once you break down what is really pretty complex, because humans are complex, so, you know, astrology is going to be a little complex, too. Once you break it down, though, 
uh, to look at where a person Saturn is, their limitations and fears and all that, and look at uh, Jupiter and where all their opportunities and happiness are. That right there, you could skip all the other planets, and if you just understood those two, you would probably have a better and happier and more fulfilled life somehow or other. And, of course, there's Venus and Mars and all the stuff that goes with that, you know. Right. And, and, you know, the sun and moon, even, which are your ego and your basic emotional responses. We'll have a course coming for that, too, at some point. Don't worry. But, uh, and it's, it's really when you kind of understand the cards that you're holding and when you have a look at uh, the transits and the progressions and the solar return and all that, when you put it all together, you can get a really good picture of what you've got and where you're going with it and why some things may suck and what you can do about that and when it will pass and in the meantime what you can take advantage of. And it, it's, it kind of covers everything. All right, cool. So final word. What does Matthew Curry, what is your message for this world? My message is, no matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you face in life, whatever obstacles you're up against, it doesn't matter how bad your childhood was, it doesn't matter how bad your love life is, all you have to do is write me and get a discount on a reading. <laughs> Astrologyshow at gmail.com or MatthewTheAstrologer at gmail.com, either way, it doesn't matter who you are, I don't care what color, creed, religion, orientation, it doesn't matter, you get a discount. That's my message. <laughs> that was the best message. <laughs> that was so real. It was great. <laughs> so if anybody is interested in booking a reading with Matthew, learning more about him, taking one of his classes, um, I don't think we've discussed what your new website is, but oh. I think it's MatthewTheAstrologer.com. Yes, it is MatthewTheAstrologer.com. Okay. By the way, uh, this... And there's discount. I will up to there soon. Oh, and yeah, right for a discount. Right for a discount. Oh. Matthew, it has been a pleasure having you on tonight. It has Thank rocked. So much. The house has been rocked. Yeah, baby. So <laughs> if you want to check him out, I will be posting all his 100,000 information links underneath the YouTube video. So thank you again for joining me tonight, and thank you for watching. I am Jenny Watson. I am a manifestation life coach. I help people get through challenges and blocks and find the way to their dreams. So if you want to check me out, I'm at www.soulreflectionscoaching.com. And next week, tune in for a special, special episode called Birthday Confessions, where me and a group of really astonishing women, some of my favorite people in the world, are going to join me for a roundtable discussion about birthdays. And it is fun because it's going to be for my birthday! So what better, yay. Yay, what better celebration than that? So it's next Sunday. 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Join us. Thank you again for watching, that, watching tonight. Namaste and embrace your power.